In this video, we're going to look at finding the least squares re regression line here, and then finding the graph, the scatter plot, and graphing that regression line, and then finally finding the some of the squared residuals of, for the least squares regression line, and that's here. We're going to do it all the long kind of way if you don't have the analysis, data analysis pack installed into your Excel, but then later in the video I'll show you the data analysis way as well if you have that installed. So here is the data. We just need to grab that data and open it up in Excel. Now, of course, I have some things I'll set so I don't have to do them all, but we're also we're going to find that this information is for the for the um, some of the squared residuals because we can't we don't have any way of doing it but calculating it out. But finding the first part isn't bad. Basically, we can go over here and highlight our data and create a stat plot, right? So insert. or scatter plot, excuse me, scatter, and do that. There's the data. I'll move it up over here. Now we want to fit a line to there, least squares regression line. And how we do that is we go up, once you click the chart, if you have to be clicking this chart, if you click off, you'll see these chart tools go away. If you click the chart tools, then you can go into layout, and then into trend line. And then you can click more trend options. And then here we can see that we have a different type of trend lines we can have. We want a linear. And then down here there's some options to display the equation. We want to do that. And display the R squared value. We want to do that as well. So we click both of those and then we close. And then there's the trend line with the equation of that trend line. And then the R squared. Now the R squared is not the um, residual squared, the R squared is basically the, how you figure out the correlation coefficient because you take the square root of that and that becomes the correlation coefficient on something that you've figured out before. And that was needed to create this line. So they may ask you some of this data. Well, there's the equation. So let's put that over here because I want to um, continue finding the sum of the squared residuals. And I need to have that equation to find the residuals. So I'm just going to type it in y equals 1.6622x minus 3.2432. It's rounded up to four decimal places, okay? And what we're trying to do now is we're trying to find y hat. We're trying to find what is the predicted value of y, and that's on this line. So what's the predicted value? Now the residuals, remember, are the actual value subtracted the predicted value. Actual y value subtracted the predicted value. So that's what we're going to do. Actual minus the predicted. So now we've got to create, put this equation in here. This is going to equal, this is going to be my y hat, my predicted. It's going to be 1.6622 times every x value, then subtract 3.2432. That is my predicted or my y hat. I'm going to pull that down like that. These are my predicted values. Now to get the residuals we take the actual minus the predicted. So let's take that. Let's do that. The actual minus the predicted and then we'll do that all the way down. And now we'll just square each of those. So basically how I'm going to do it is just take that cell times itself. Or you can do squared, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to do it like that. That cell squared times itself. Okay, so I'm going to pull down this cell here, all the way down. And so now this is the difference of the actual minus the predicted value and then squared. And now if we sum them up, this is going to be the sum of the squared residuals. So we have all that information. We've got the equation, the graph, and the sum of the squared residuals. Let's go back and look at the problem here. See if I can get some of this on here anyway. There's the equation, the 1.6622 minus 3x minus 3.2432. So we're a little off, but let's look at the tolerance here. See they have a 
plus or minus 0 0.001 tolerance, so we would be fine. And then, because that's just depending on how everything rounds, okay, and then we have the sum of the squared residuals, 2.3108, 2.3108, they have a error there too that is allowed. And then look at our graph here. This is the graph. Pull it up over here. And there's our graph. And basically you have to match them up. You know, make sure that they look pretty much the same because they're going to have maybe different units. See, 11. But look at where the points are, right? and the trend lines, how it goes right through and right through that one as when you're matching them up. You can obviously see that in these other ones, they don't go through all three of, all, you know, all five of them, excuse me. Same thing here. That one's the closest, but then look, that one's up. So it's pretty, it's pretty clear what these will be. So that's how you can get all this information, the equation, the graphs, and uh, the sum of the squared residuals all in Excel without using any type of data analysis pack inserted in there or anything. Continue watching for uh, a quicker way using the data analysis pack, but remember all computers may not have that installed when you take a test or something. So this is a better way to do it. Okay, now we're going to use the data analysis pack in Microsoft Excel. And so if you have that, you can use that at your home computer or something to do some of the problems, or maybe you're able to use it all the time. So we get this data again, and I'm just going to use the Excel sheet I have already created. I just in, have this data in here, and I'm going to select a cell here and go up here and click Data, and then over to Data Analysis, and then down to Regression, and click OK. Now it's going to ask us for our input cells. So I'm going to go here and put the Y. That's first. It's the Y value, so be careful with that. And I'm going to delete this and then do the X input range, these values here. Then the output range, I'm going to just select right where I have my cell there. It's kind of right there. And then it, I have the residuals selected here to show me those. If you want to have the residuals, that will show at the very end and you can kind of sum them up to prove that some of the squared residuals are those. Those are the error values between the actual and the predicted value. So it's kind of nice to have those. All right, then we click OK, and that's it. That's all there is to it. It produces it all for you. Let's look at where the values come from, though. So we have this equation here, the 1.6622 x, right, times x, and then minus that. So here's the slope, the 1.6622. That's down here under x variable 1. So they have the coefficient of x variable. That's 1.6662162. You can round it off. And then right above it is the intercept. So you got to remember, it doesn't go in order. It goes intercept first and then the co slope. So there's my intercept and slope. So that's how you get the equation of that line. You have to build it yourself from those p two pieces of information. Okay, the r squared value. That's there, R square, 0.9465, right there. So if you need that. And also, we want the sum of the squared residuals. Okay, so the sum of the squared residuals, here's the residual. This SS means the sum of the squared residuals. So that 2.3108108, right there, matches up nicely. So that's where you would find it on this output. Now this gives quite a bit more information that we're not using right yet, like these error bounds and stuff. So that might come in, you know, beneficial in the future. And then here are the residuals. Here's the predicted values that I created, right? 1.74, that's up here. Okay, that's from previous. And then these are the residuals. And if you wanted to get them, you can just easily, you know, square them. I'm just going to multiply them here. You don't have to. There's no reason to do this except just to prove that this that area up there is exactly the same. So 2.3108 and then right up there 2.3108. So these are the residuals for each item. That's for each observation. For each of these values as an input, those are the outputs right there. So that's how you get the data 
you'd get this graph the same way just by selecting this data here, making a scatter plot, insert, scatter, and then scatter plot. And then how I got that data is once the scatter plot's inserted, you go and you just click this, and then these chart tools come, and the layout and trend line. Once you have the trend line, you're able to go to more trend line options and select linear, and then you want to select display equation on chart and display the R squared value. And then that will give you this chart here. So that's the same way of creating the chart right away at the beginning, and then using the data analysis pack to kind of give you this information so you don't have to create all this.